What's the difference between art and design? Designers usually need to consider function and form from a brief with a specific audience in mind. Design usually has to solve problems, while art can provoke thought or emotions. Designs are created for others. It has a plan, a purpose, while art can be for oneself and interpreted or subjective. But can we blur the two through abstract painting aesthetics? The elements of art and the elements of design overlap. The seven elements of art are line, shape, value, color, texture, space, and form. The elements of design are, well, the same. These elements are the ingredients to an artwork. The principles are how these elements are used, or the recipe. The seven principles of art and design are balance, rhythm, pattern, emphasis, contrast, unity, and movement. The difficult thing with these principles is that they may differ slightly when you Google them. But I don't want to spend a lot of time going into this. Instead, let's look at how artists use them. Russian artist Vasily Kandinsky is considered the godfather of abstract art. He used color, rhythm, and balance in this abstract work. Another Russian artist, Kazimir Malevich, developed suprematism in the early 20th century to describe his abstract paintings of pure feeling. In this work, we can see shape, color, balance, and space. Dutch painter Piet Mondrian also used color, balance, repetition, and space in his hard edge paintings. American artist Rex Ray used color, pattern, and ornamentation in his work. Contemporary Brazilian artist Beatriz Milhaces utilizes elements and principles of design in her work. They focus mainly on color, shape, pattern, and repetition. We can also see possible levels of inspiration from the work of Sonia Delaunay. British artist Lisa Giles is similar, but focuses mostly on shape and contrast and has a more limited use of color. American artist Jessica Snow uses bright, vivid colors with shape and texture in the tradition of geometric abstraction. Trudy Benson is another contemporary American painter that utilizes large swaths of paint with overlapping lines, frames, and shapes. Contemporary American artist Harold Hollingsworth does an excellent job at using surface design and textures, but focuses more on overlapping elements that include shape, line, pattern, and text. American graffiti pioneer known as Futura is known for his abstract spray paint approach to his gallery work. Now contemporary California-based artist Kinda Kaledi and American Adam Sultan at first appear very different to the others. However, upon closer look, these playful, childlike, or doodle works, for lack of a better expression, have seriously considered their use of space and forms. All these artists mentioned focus more on the principles of design in their work and have tackled them with different approaches and techniques. For this task, we'll take inspiration from Harold Hollingsworth and incorporate color, some layering with line over a textured background, and implement some shapes while it's keeping design in mind. This painting is not a finished work, but is instead a learning opportunity to test and trial ideas while it's also implementing brush techniques. I will use tempera paint, which is water-based, but you could also follow along if using acrylic. This painting should take around 60 minutes to complete. Feel free to pause or rewind as you follow along. Let's get started. Abstract Painting Techniques and Skills Design As this is a practice task, let's use half an A4 size paper in our sketchbook. Some materials we will need will be a water cup to clean our brushes, a plastic paint scraper or an old plastic card, or even a piece of cardboard will work. We'll also need some scrap paper with straight edges, some paper towels, as well as masking tape and scissors. On our palette, we'll need some white, the warm colors yellow, orange, red, and the cool colors cyan blue, dark blue, and some black. Take note of how I've organized my palette and how much paint I have taken. My palette is organized off to the side, allowing me space to mix colors on my palette should I decide to do so. For brushes, I have a filbert brush, which has a curved top, and a medium and smaller round brush. I'm not sure if we'll need both, but let's have them just in case. The first thing we'll do is use our filbert brush and take some white and cover the entire paper. We need to do this to create a barrier so when we apply masking tape, it doesn't tear the paper. I'm also going to mix a small amount of yellow into the background, as well as some orange. Apply some white paint over it to dull it down if needed. I'll also take a very small amount of red and apply it to the bottom right corner area. Blow it dry when complete. 
Next take some white and mix a very small amount of red into it to make a pale pink. I'll then place my brush in the water cup. Get your plastic scraper and scoop up some of the paint. We are going to drag this over the bottom third area. You may have watched tutorial 3 where we created an artwork with this technique. Don't worry about being neat here. Feel free to scrape horizontally or vertically. Wipe your scraper with the paper towel afterwards and blow it dry. We will use some masking tape to mask an area in the upper left. I pull on the tape to make sure it's straight and place the tape down. When I press down on the tape, I only press down on the one side where I'll be painting. This will make it easier to remove later. Take your white and mix in some yellow. Use the scraper to apply the paint. You don't have to press down very heavy. We are trying to create texture, so any inconsistencies will make it look more interesting. Wipe your scraper when complete. Blow dry your work afterwards. To remove the tape, slowly peel it away at a 45 degree angle. If you leave the tape on too long, it sometimes rips the paper. Next, take some white and mix a very small amount of blue. We'll just paint a square in the upper right corner. We'll do this freehand. Next, make some pink. We'll paint a rectangle in the bottom right. To paint a straight line, I load my brush with paint and apply pressure with the brush so the bristles bend. This pressure helps create a crisp edge. Create an orange hue by mixing some yellow into it. Let's get our scrap paper and create a mask. I'm going to draw out half a circle and then cut it. Using the negative piece, I place it down where I want to paint. I get my brush and apply the paint along the edge moving away from the paper. I do this so the paint does not bleed underneath. I then paint in the remaining shape. I'll also apply some pure white over it to soften it out. Next I'll take some pure orange and paint another smaller half circle. I'll just do this freehand. Blow it dry afterwards. So I'm going to need some more white on my palette. I'm then going to take the scraper and apply it all over the work. If you have scooped too much white like I did, simply scoop it up and wipe it off on the palette. Remember, we want some of these scraper marks to show to create texture. Blow it dry when complete. I think my red is still too bright, so I'll apply some additional white over it with the brush. I'm also going to mask this area again and apply a pale pink over it with my scraper. This stage can be optional for you. I'll do the same thing again in the top right area. Let's take the half circle we made before and draw out a reverse J shape, which we will then cut out. After cleaning my brush, I'll place the stencil down and mix some cyan blue with the white. I paint along the edges and then in the middle area, applying a second coat as well. Let's do it again in the bottom area, mixing some of the darker blue into our color. And let's add another one off to the right, running off the frame. I'll mask the edge, but you can do yours freehand if you wish. I'll mask off a rectangular shape in the top right and apply pure yellow to it. I'll then do something similar in the bottom left and apply red. I'll blow it dry and then wash my brush as well. 
I'm going to use that half circle cut out again and apply orange to it on the bottom right. Again, I paint along the edge, moving away from the paper so it doesn't bleed underneath. I then clean my brush and blow dry my work. So we are almost finished. We'll mask an area horizontally and then one diagonally to apply some black areas. I'm going to first paint the horizontal one in between the two masked areas. I mix some dark blue into the black to make it more vibrant. This is better than applying black straight out of the bottle. I then peel away one of the masks and blow it dry. I'm then going to add the other diagonal mask and apply the color. I then carefully peel away all the tape on a 45 degree angle. I then blow it dry. I'm going to repeat this process by creating a similar thicker line underneath. We'll then do something similar by creating a right angle in the top right area but with thinner line weight. So you see, as I pulled my tape away, some black got onto my yellow. If this happens to you, you can leave it or try something to incorporate it into your work. I'll now do the horizontal line. To balance out the work, I think another black area is needed in the top left. I'll use the circle cut from before to create the rounded edge. To create a straight edge, I'll use the scrap paper as a mask painting away from the paper. My black bled a bit underneath the curve, so I'll just recreate it again. You don't have to do this next step, but I think it would be useful to show. Most of our masking edges are straight, but what do we do if we want a curve? I can use an X-Acto knife and gently cut through the tape. I have to be careful I don't cut through the paper as well. Once I make the cut, I can peel it away and apply my color. So our painting is done and I'm actually pleased with the result. The black lines help create a more designed feel with the work and I like the elements of space that are created. I also like the textured background and some of the transparency areas with this orange and blue. If I wish to pursue this style further, I think this could be something to explore as it helps create some depth with the work. Check out some of the other abstract painting tutorials available in the playlist linked in the card above. Good luck with your painting pursuits. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and gained some insights. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment, question, or future video suggestion below. This has been a Video Production.